Namaste, everybody, and welcome once again to Dr. Arjun Pai Astrology channel. Today is a very special day, especially that now we know that Jupiter has transited into the sidereal sign of Aries. So this is called as uh, Guru Sankramana. It's also called as Guru Payarchi in Tamil. So besides Guru's transition, which most of the videos have been done by a lot of YouTubers on the transition of Guru into Mesh Rashi, but a less commonly spoken about phenomenon with the Guru's transit every year is about the Pushkaram. So today I'm going to talk about a very special uh, transition that is happening for us and the auspiciousness of what is called as Ganga Pushkaram. Now, a lot of uh, scientific studies have also been done to see what happens and why uh, you know, it is celebrated at uh, the different rivers. There are 12 rivers in India which are considered to be sacred. And with Jupiter's transit, happening into each of these zodiac signs, a different river every year is chosen where the Pushkaram happens. Now, what is a Pushkaram? Pushkaram or Pushkaralu is a, a phenomenon for 12 days. And that comes from uh, a myth from or a, a mythological story from Puranas. The Puranas talk about Shiva, uh, who was so impressed with a Brahmin priest who did uh, intense penance to him. And in his boon, he gives him the boon of going and residing in the Kamandalu, which means the water pot of Brahma. The water pot of Brahma is said to be very, very auspicious. Now, this person, this Brahmin's name was Pushkara Raja. Or in uh, Andhra Pradesh, they call him Pushkara Raju as well. So Pushkara Raja was advised by Brahma to go and reside in the holy waters in India every year during the transition of Jupiter. Now, what happens during this time? It is a notice that there is enhanced electromagnetic field on the earth due to the solar magnetic activity because Every transition of Jupiter that happens to a zodiac sign, and Jupiter is also scientifically called as the Barry Center. The sun also revolves around the Barry Center, while Jupiter also revolves around the sun. So this is a phenomenon which has been discovered by the modern uh, you know, astronomers. They have seen this. So what happens with this kind of timing? This timing is when it is called as Pushkara, which magnetizes the water in the rivers and enhances the healing properties of the water. It is also observed that the entire body system uh, is raised to a condition whenever we go and take a holy dip in these rivers. And the condition of the mind with the cycles, the mind that is happening, will be equivalent to the effect of a deep transcendental meditation. Moreover, the waters are supposed to acquire this magnetic properties from the earth and they are stored in the water. And anybody who takes the ritualistic bath, which is called as a snana, at this uh, particular times, they are supposed to be uh, relieved from um, many health disorders and ailments as well. Now, I will show you through the slides and those people can just understand the phenomenon and I'll give you certain dates and where this is happening this year. And then I will go into the concept of Pushkara Navamsha. So those people who are not interested in the astrological understanding of uh, Pushkaram and uh, the significance, the astrological, can skip the second part. The first part. Now, this year, the Pushkaram, started on the 22nd of uh, April, which was a Friday. And uh, it was Shukla Dvitiya Titi, which means it is the waxing phase of the moon and the second lunar day. 
Now, this is a very important day, which is already passed. And uh, 23rd April, which was a Saturday, which is also also for many of you in India would have also passed, it was a Tritiya, Akshay Tritiya. And it was uh, very auspicious because moon was in Rohi Nakshatra and sun was in a sign of its exaltation in Aries. Now, this year, the Ganga Pushkaram is going to happen at uh, seven different places and is celebrated in a, a grand manner. And this is at uh, with this origin where Ganga originates. Um, it's uh, the glacier, which is called as Gangotri. That's where the celebrations will start. Then Kedarnath, Badrinath, and Haridwar, which is also called as uh, Maya Puri in the olden times. So all of these uh, four places where this will be celebrated uh, falls in the state of Uttarakhand in India. Then the next two places where the celebrations of uh, Ganga Pushkaram will happen at uh, Prayagraj in uh, Uttar Pradesh and Banaras, which is Kashi in Uttar Pradesh. And finally, there is one place in Uttar uh, West Bengal, which is called as Ganga Sagar. So these are the seven places where the celebrations of uh, uh, Ganga will happen. Usually this is uh, people uh, involve themselves in uh, not only holy baths, but also with doing Pitru Tarpanam or Pitru Shad, uh, honoring the ancestors. Also, they do participate in the Ganga Arti, which is the puja, which is done in the evening by the priest. And other such, um, you know, auspicious things that people get involved with uh, during this time. So these 12 days, out of these 12 uh, days, which starts on 22nd of April and goes till 5th of uh, May. But in this year, what has happened is 5th of May would be a, uh, a, a lunar eclipse. And that's why they have cut short the Pushkaram to the 3rd of May. Now, let me quickly go through some of the dates and uh, I will talk about the significance of these days in the later part of this uh, le lesson. Okay, so what are the important dates? The next important date where you can take a holy dip is on 25th of April, which is a Tuesday, which happens to be a Shukla Paksha Panchmititi, which is the fifth lunar day in the waxing phase of the moon. And it happens to be Ardra Nakshatra. So whenever the timing, when you see in the ephemeris, it, uh, you know, the, the moon is transiting through Ardha Nakshatra fourth pada, that is when it is very auspicious to do the holy day. The next day is the 26th of April, which is a Wednesday, Shukla Shashti Titi, which is the sixth lunar day, in the waxing phase of the moon. And the nakshatra that will be um, very auspicious for uh, doing the holy dip is Punarvasu Nakshatra, and that is the second pada. Of the second quarter. Then the next is the 27th of April, which is a Thursday. Shukla Shaptami. This is very, very auspicious because there are two nakshatras which are coming uh, with the Pushkara Navamshas, which is Push Punarvasu Nakshatra fourth pada and the Pushya Nakshatra second pada. So you can time that and you can take your holy dip and do your other intentions that you want to set up because this is a very auspicious um, uh, period for doing that. After the 27th of April is the next is the 1st of May, which is a Monday, which is Ekadashi. And uh, it is Puro Falguni Nakshatra. The third Pada is said to be very auspicious. Then the next is the 2nd of May, which is a Tuesday, which is a Dwadashi Titi. And on that day, Uttara Falguni Nakshatra, 1st and the 4th Pada are said to be Pushkara Navamsha Padas, where you can take a holy dip. And finally, it's the 3rd of May, which is Wednesday, which is a Triodashi, which is Hastar Nakshatra, second father, can be used for doing this holy death. Now, for all of those who want to skip the astrological understanding of these uh, phenomena, then you can skip this section. Okay, now what is Pushkara Navamsha? This is a concept that I want to talk about. It's a portion of fortune in the zodiac out of the 108 nakshatra quarters or nakshatra padas. So we have 27 nakshatras and we have each nakshatra has four padas. So 27 times four, we have 108 nakshatra quarters. Out of these nakshatra quarters, 24 of them are considered called as pushkara karaka or they are very auspicious of the nine portions of every zodiac sign. 
So each Rashi typically would have two Pushkara Navamsha Padas. Okay. So 12 zodiac signs into two will have 24 Pushkara Navamsha Padas. Now, let us go and let us see what are these Pushkara Navamshas. And there is also a concept called as Pushkara Bhaga, which is a specific degree that I will not cover in today's lesson or today's, uh, you know, less, uh, this, uh, today's discussion. We will talk about it another time. So let us look at what is Pushkara Navamsha. Please understand that this is a very, very auspicious part of the zodiac where it is called the fortune point or the portions of the zodiac in the nakshatras, which are said to be very, very auspicious. Okay, let's go and see what is that. They are also called as Okay, so these are the, the 24 uh, portions of the zodiac where we see, which becomes very auspicious. Now, let me try to explain to you why this is very auspicious. Why are these 24 uh, quarters out of these 108 said to be very, very auspicious? They are also called um, as uh, Pushkara Rajakaraka or Pushkara Navamsha. Pushya Karaka, these are the different names that they are referred to as. Now, what is Pushkara? Pushkara means it's a kind of a blue lotus which blossoms very rarely on a full moon day. And not everybody gets to see its blossoming because it happens on a full moon day. And it is believed that when a blue lotus, you know, blossoms, even the devatas and the lower dimensional um, you know, deities which are called, we call them as Kinnaras, Yakshas and, uh, you know, Gandharvas, they all come to see the blossoming of this rare, uh, you know, flower which is called as Nilakamal or Blue Lotus. Now, when I will go to the explanation of what this means, but let us look at the 24 points in the zodiac and why they are called as a flower, why are they called as a lotus? Let's look at these 24 points in the zodiac. So this is the 12th zodiac and uh, the nakshatra padas which are there. And if you join all of these points in the zodiac, you will see that there is a beautiful kind of a lotus formation that you can see in the sky. So Aries has nine nakshatra padas. And uh, then you see there are um, Kritika nakshatra, the Taurus 10, 11 and 12. So you can see from this, there is a beautiful formation of a lotus-like flower that you can see. So this, um, these points are said to be very auspicious. Um, I will come to that, why they're auspicious and why even in a natal horoscopy, you can look at these points to be uh, points which give you additional power and also make the individual quite prominent in the society when certain prominent planets fall there. When I say prominent, I would say if the Lagna is falling there, if the Lagna Lord is falling at these 24 points or the moon is falling there, Atmakaraka is falling there. Of course, even the dispositors of uh, important planets which fall in there also can give you such strength to your chart. Some additional strength will come to the chart. Okay. Now, let's go and look. What are the the 12 rivers that are associated with this Pushkaram. Now this Pushkaram with the Ju Jupiter's uh, Sankramana or its transition into Aries, it's uh, going to be Ganga or River Ganges. Okay, so that is between 22nd of April to 5th of May, but I would cut short by two days, which would make it, uh, you know, 3rd of May, 2023. So you can see every Rashi has a river which is associated with like Taurus, Narmada, Gemini, Saraswati, Cancer is Yamuna or Jamna, then Leo is Godavari, Virgo is Krishna, uh, Libra is Kaveri, Scorpio, it is uh, Bhimarati or Bhima, which is uh, considered as uh, the Pushkaram river in Maharashtra, Karnataka and Telangana. And in Tamil Nadu, the festival is also celebrated on the banks of uh, uh, Tamraparani. Okay, then Sagittarius is Tapti, which is called as uh, Pushkara Vahini as well. And in the Assam part, this festival is celebrated also on the banks of the river Brahmaputra. 
uh, Capricorn, whenever Jupiter transits into Capricorn, the river is Tungabhadra. When Jupiter transits into Aquarius, it is the Sindhu River, which is also called the Indus River. And finally, when Jupiter uh, transits into Pisces, it is called as Pranahita or Parinita. This, this is the river. So you can see all the previous uh, um, Pushkarams that have happened at these rivers and the dates that they have happened. Okay, So this year it is happening from uh, 22nd of April to 5th of May. Now, let's look at the concept of uh, Pushkara Navamshas. Now, Pushkara Navamshas, you have to know certain secrets of Pushkara Navamsha. So Pushkara Navamshas are those portions uh, in all fire signs, you would see the seventh Navamsha Pada of the Rashi. So each Rashi is divided into nine quarters and nine uh, quarters of each of three degrees, 20 minutes. So totally three degrees, 20 minutes into nine would make it 30 degrees. So each 30 degree of a zodiac sign is divided into nine parts. So in all the fire signs, which is Aries, Leo and Sagittarius, the seventh part and the ninth part of the zodiac sign becomes the Pushkara Navamsha degrees. In all uh, earthy signs, Prithvi Tattva Rashis, which is Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, the third and the fifth quad, uh, you know, uh, part, I have given you the degrees. So in Taurus, between 6 degrees 40 to 10 degrees, and 13 degrees 20 to 16 degrees 40 would be the, uh, the Navamsha Padas, which are said to be Pushkara Navamsha. In all Vayu Tattva Rashis, which is Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, you would find the sixth and the eighth um, in a quarter of the zodiac sign becomes Pushkara Navamsha and all watery signs you will see uh, which is uh, water sign Jaladatva Rashis which is Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces you will see the first and the third will become Pushkara Navamsha. Now why are these portions of the zodiac very very important because we have to see the corresponding Rashis that they will map onto in the Navamsha the divisional the ninth division the ninth harmonic Okay, now what is very important to note here is that all the auspicious Navamshas are being, um, you know, mapped onto these Pushkara Navamshas. What, what, what do I mean by auspicious? They are called as Shubha Navamshas. What are those Shubha Navamshas? All those Navamshas which are ruled by Jupiter, Venus, the, the Moon, and Mercury's Rashis would be Pushkara Navamsha, especially in the Mercury's Rashi, only Virgo, not Gemini. So that means what are Jupiter's Rashi, which is Sagittarius and Pisces. So those two in the Navamsha, if you see in the D9 chart, if you see these two zodiac signs a planet is going, then most likely they are from the Pushkara Navamsha. Okay. Then uh, Virgo um, also is from Mercury sign they become Pushkara Navamsha. Then you have uh, Venus's Rashis, which is Taurus and Libra. They also become Pushkara Navamshas. And uh, Moon, which is Cancer. So whenever we look at the Navamsha, you have to see any planet which is there in these uh, you know, signs, mostly they are coming from Pushkara Navamshas. Not all of them, only 24 of them. I will explain why also. So moon's Rashi, so moon is Cancer, Taurus, Libra, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. So only six out of the 12 zodiac signs in the Navamsha in the D9 chart, they become Pushkara Navamshas. Now there is an easy way to remember this. Okay, This whole concept that you can see. Uh, and I've given here, there is no Pushkara Navamshas if uh, in the Navamsha signs, if they are falling in Aries, Gemini, Leo, Scorpio, Capricorn, and Aquarius. Aries and Scorpio are ruled by Mars. And then Saturn's Rashis, which is uh, Capricorn and Aquarius. Then Sun's Rashi in the Navamsha, which is Leo. Uh, there is uh, Gemini. And so all of these six signs, if any planet is falling there, they will not be in Pushkara Navamsha in the D1 chart. That's as simple as that. Now, let's go and see. So we will also see that uh, in the Rashi chart, or there is an easier way to remember this from the Nakshatra perspective. And this is how I 
have taught this to my students to remember the Pushkara Navamshas. So, so we know that there is no Pushkara Navamshas for the nakshatras which are in Vimshotri associated with Ketu, Mars, and Mercury. These three nakshatras in Vimshotri, which are associated with these three planets, what are those three associated nakshatras, Ketu's nakshatras in Vimshotri, which is Ashwini, Magha, and Mula. There is no Pushkara Navamshas there. Then Mars's nakshatras in Vimshotri. What are those? Maragashirsha, Chitra, and Dhanishta nakshatra. There is no Pushkara Navamshas in there. And Mercury's nakshatra in Vimshotri, which is we have Ashlesha, Jeshta, and Revati. So these nine nakshatras have no Pushkara Navamshas in there. Okay, now let's look at which of the ones which forms Pushkara Navamsha. So all of that, Kritika, uh, Sun's nakshatras, which is Sun's nakshatras are Kritika, Uttara Falguni, and Uttara Shada. So in that, the first pada of the Sun's nakshatras and the fourth pada of the Sun's nakshatras are Pushkara Navamshas. So first and the fourth padas of Kritika, first and the fourth padas of Uttara Falguni, first and the four padas of Uttara Shada, they all become Pushkara Navamshas. Next, Jupiter. Jupiter's nakshatras in Vimshotri, what are those? They are Punarvasu, then Vishaka, and Purvabhadrapada. Out of this, the second and the fourth padas of Jupiter's nakshatras are Pushkara Navamshas. Then, Moon and Saturn's nakshatras, what are Moon's nakshatras? Rohini, Hasta, and Shravana nakshatras. In that, the second pada becomes Pushkara Navamshas. The same is the case with Saturn's nakshatras in Vimshotri. What are Saturn's nakshatras in Vimshotri? They are Pushya nakshatra, they are uh, Anuradha nakshatra and Uttara Bhadra nakshatras. And Uttara Bhadra Pada, uh, Anuradha and Pushya, the second pada of all Saturn's nakshatras are Pushkara Navamshas. Then uh, Venus, Venus Navamsha, the third pada of Venus nakshatras are Pushkara Navamshas. Which are Venus's nakshatras in Vimshotri? They are Bharani nakshatra, they are Puro Falguni nakshatra, and Purva Shada nakshatra. For all of these, the third pada, the third quarter of their nakshatras are Pushkara Navamshas. And finally, all the Rahu's nakshatras, the fourth pada of Rahu's nakshatras in Vimshotri are Pushkara Navamshas. Which are those? Ardra is Rahu's nakshatra, then Swati and Shatavisha. So fourth padas of these nakshatras. So now you can easily say, very easily to remember, if you see a nakshatra is ruled by sun, the first and fourth. If the nakshatra is ruled by Jupiter in Vimshotri, then the second and fourth. If the nakshatra is ruled by sun, Saturn and moon, then the second pada. If the nakshatra is ruled by uh, Venus, then it is the third pada. And we, if it is ruled by Rahu, it is the fourth pada. Okay, so this is how you'll remember them. I've given you a chart here to uh, to kind of memorize this and to un understand the phenomenon. Okay, so Pushkara Navamsha is a very important concept, and this is why I've given you a chart here, which is the chart of. Uh, uh, Bill Clinton, which has been uh, rectified by uh, Kane Rao, although in Astro Data Bank it's a different uh, time. They have given 851, which is a, a rodent reading of A, but uh, Kane Rao in his books he is used as 757. Okay. Now, here when you see he has his moon in Pushkara Navamsha. Also, his Saturn is also in Pushkara Navamsha. Okay. It's in Pushya Nakshatra, second father. So, Saturn. Now, if you look, Saturn is with his Lagna Lord, which becomes his fifth house Lord with the Lagna Lord sitting in the 11th house, very auspicious uh, combination. And Moon becomes the dispositor, which has gone to the eighth house and it has uh, caused a blemish in his chart. Even though that he went through eighth house is about sexual scandals. And you know that he was testified under a grand jury that he has misled his family and the nation and you know, you're, he's known for the Monica Lewinsky uh, scandal, which broke out, which almost bought him under the impeachment, but he was not impeached. 
you can see that moon has saved grace for him because Jupiter is aspecting. The fourth Lord Jupiter has come as a saving grace for him and moon is sitting in Kritika Nakshatra, Paspada. Uh, it, moon is also his Atmakaraka. It's a very important planet for him. The 11th Lord in the 8th house. Okay. So, similarly, if you look at uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi's chart, this is uh, from Astro Data Bank with Rodan Rating AA. He has his Jupiter sitting in Kritika Nakshatra first Pada. Jupiter also is his Atmakaraka. Okay. So you can see Jupiter going there has in the seventh house has created um, a great uh, important being that you see is called as a Mahatma, as a great soul. And he believed in nonviolent disobedience. Okay. So this is, this is the way that you would start looking at the charts. Uh, and you would be able to understand the importance of Pushkar and Avamshas. So please pay attention in everybody's chart to see which are the parts of your chart is there in Pushkar and Avamsha. And Pushkar and Avamsha means they have gone into a very auspicious, uh, you know, Shubha Navamshas. Now, not that everybody is whose Pushkar and Navamsha would be good because there is a condition you need to know. We have to apply all the other Parashri principles. Now, please make sure that when you see a Pushkar and Avamsha uh, and the transition from the D1 chart to the D9 chart, just ensure that the planet has not gone into the 6th, 8th and 12th from the Lagna in the Navamsha. Otherwise, it can create that whatever blemish is there in the chart will come out because they are not auspicious bhavas for the Pushkara Navamsha to go into. However, if the Pushkara Navamshas have gone, uh, of the, the planet Pushkara Navamshas have gone into square houses or uh, trine houses, which is we call as Kendras or Trikonas, then they are said to be very auspicious, especially in a Navamsha if they are also aspected by uh, Shubhagrahas, which is, you know, Naisargika Shubhagrahas, if they are aspecting, then they are said to be enhancing during the Dashas and the Mahadashas. So I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. And uh, on uh, Pushkar and Vamsha, please do pay attention. But also remember, that doesn't mean that you just have these 24 quarters, means it's um, something that you can rejoice because you also have to see the disposition of uh, the Pushkara Navamsha planets in the um, uh, in the uh, in the Navamsha chart. Okay, there are certain exceptions that I would also give you when you look at Pushkara Navamshas. There is one part which also is uh, uh, gives you uh, a dual, which is Vishakha Nakshatra second pada. Whenever we see it comes into Pushkara Navamsha. However, it also comes into Ashtamamsha. I will do another video on Ashtamamsha to teach you what Ashtamamsha means. So a planet which is sitting in uh, Vishakha Nakshatra second pada, it should fall in uh, Libra, Rashi. But in the Navamsha, it would have gone to the eighth house. So that is not a great transition for the planet to go. So that disposition is not very good. Then there are three other uh, Pushkara Navamshas which are also said to be very, very auspicious, especially the fourth pada of uh, Punarvasu is said to be uh, very, very auspicious because it uh, happens to be also a Virgo Tamsha. It also become, um, you know, um, uh, Tatvottama, which means the same Tatva, it will be there. And then the second is uh, Rohini Nakshatra. Uh, second Pada, again, is very, very auspicious. And then the third is Uttara Ashada, first Pada. So Uttara Ashada, first Pada, um, Punarvasu fourth pada and Rohini second pada. These three out of the 108 are said to be uh, the you know the king makers, or rather they are very, very auspicious parts of the zodiac sign. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. Please leave your comments and uh, also let me know what other videos you would like me to do and discuss. Um, so thank you very much. Namaste.